du Brésil, qui va vous parler en anglais, tu as la parole. Sao Paulo, oui, là. Mesdames et messieurs, bien, je mets des bruits en français, mais euh, je savais que la majorité de l'audience était francophone. Aujourd'hui, euh, j'aurais préparé mon intervention dans cette langue, mais malheureusement, je le préparer en anglais. De manière que je vous demande que vous me pouvez excuser. Je parlerai en français et en anglais. Alors, Yes, my name is Humberto Silva, and uh, we are from the uh, REC for the Hepatitis Eradication in the World. I'm a Brazilian citizen, but we are based with our group in Washington, D.C., United States. And uh, we're here today because we're going to be launching a very important campaign against hepatitis for next year. That's me there, taking a medicine eight years ago against hepatitis. Back then, the treatment used to be very difficult, very heavy, um, full of side effects. And I'll tell you how I found that I carried the virus. I was going to see the World Cup in South Africa in 2010, and as I'm a president also for a group that caters with children with cancer, I was going to go visit some countries in Africa to develop some work. And I decided that I should uh, take a vaccine to be protected. I went and saw the doctor and I asked him for a vaccine. Instead of simply giving me the vaccine, he said, have you had yourself tested against hepatitis? I said, Doc, just give me the vaccine and let me go and see Brazil play it with it. He said, well, I would do it if I were you. I said, well, okay, I'll do it. Well, I did it and I found the virus there. I was positive for hepatitis C. And I said, but how come, doctor, if I don't feel the same, if, I, if I'm full of energy myself, I, it should be wrong, it should be something... It was, isn't this uh, somebody else's uh, exam? I said, no, it's yours. Well, I went, I saw the World Cup. Brazil lost, unfortunately. <laughs> but we're going to win this year. And I came back and I started the treating. And as I treated, I saw that I wasn't a privileged one. No. In my home country alone, there were other three million people, three million ladies and gentlemen, that have the same situation as I used to, that were carrying an invisible, a silent killer inside of them without realizing. That's half the size of a city of Syria. But if we go to the world, we are talking about half a billion people that are suffering from this deadly disease for Jodhui today. That's enough to feel 10,000 stadiums, 10,000 of contaminated people. But because of the way the health authorities all over the world have dealt with the disease so far, and I'm not talking about the authorities here in this country only, not about the ones in Brazil only, I'm talking about the whole world, because it's a neglected disease. It doesn't show, I didn't show, it doesn't have a face, but it exists. And the situation today, with the half a billion people that are infected, is that every day, every minute, as we speak here, we've been speaking for almost three minutes, every minute, ladies and gentlemen, two people die of this disease all over the world. Two people per minute. So if we were talking for three minutes here, Already six people died since I started. So I received it as a blessing from God. Because I forgot to tell, but 
the next, the next talk to, that I had to the doctor, the same that gave me the vaccine, was that he directed me to see how my liver was. Because the disease gets inside of one and stays attacking the liver till the liver can function no more. My liver, I had cirrhosis. I said, but how come, for Christ's sake? Cirrhosis is a disease of people who drink. I don't drink that much. Okay, a little drink I take, but not that much. No, 80% of the cases of cirrhosis, ladies and gentlemen, they do come from hepatitis B, C, etc. And I had cirrhosis and the doctor looked at me, he said, listen boy, you're not going to last too long if you don't take treatment, if you don't reach a cure. Maybe one year, maybe two, but you are going to need a liver transplant, like Ref de Foix. So I took it as a blessing. If it were a soccer game, the referee was about to blow the whistle and end the game, and God sent me a chance to get me treatment, to get me a cure. And after two years of heart treatment, I achieved a cure, thanks Lord. So I decided I should devote the little that I had in myself, as I was already in the business, as I was already in the philanthropy, as I was a fundraiser, that I should try and do something to change the situation in the world and help the ones who need it. So I made a vow to God that I would work for free till the rest of my life, not aiming to make a single penny out of it, not accepting a cent from it, but I would try and help the ones who need it. And so we formed... Thank you. Obviously, people like my daughter, Isabella, who is there, they can't... Stand, they can't bear me hearing about hepatitis no more. So much. I got so fascinated about it that I only talk about hepatitis. You know, and that's how I live. But I took it as a mission of life, and we formed the Brazilian Association for Hepatitis Patients. And we started doing work. We started by opening a clinic in Sao Paulo, a free clinic, where we provided free consultations with a doctor, and we had that little in the, in the left lower side there, the little machine that provided um, exams for free for people. Well, we opened a second clinic in Porto Alegre. We opened still one more in Belo Horizonte. The, the poor boy, the, he had a liver problem. He went and had a liver transplant, but today he's cured and he looks wonderful. I wish I had his picture to show him today. He's cured. And we still opened one more, and one in Rio, one more. And then the last one that we opened last year, all for free, with state-of-the-art exams and doctors. We have 20 doctors nowadays. We opened the last one in Mexico City. Well, thank you. Yeah, so we've seen 50,000 patients, all for free. Oh, that's a colleague that we saw losing his life, he with his daughter there. He died of hepatitis. Because when the first symptom arrives, it's too late normally. One needs a liver transplant. Um, and, but beyond it, we felt that the biggest the thing the, the, that we needed to do the most was to discover people like B that carried the virus and didn't know. Because in the world, only 5% of the people that carry the virus are diagnosed. So we started doing the finger prick test, very rapid, very cheap test, going in the streets and finding people who were contaminated. And we started doing one here, one there, one, and we reached the point of one million tests, all for free, finding people infected, and we found thousands of people infected. And we took the postal rotary, and I'm going to be through very, very soon. I know that people want me to finish. I'll be there very, very shortly. We took the post to Rotary, Rotary embraced the cause. So we see the last president of Rotary all supporting the campaigns. And they recognized us as the REC International Group for Hepatitis Eradication, officialized by the Rotary International. So I'm going to end the presentation by inviting you to join us in this campaign for next year, which is the Pan-African campaign about hepatitis, against hepatitis, because the continent has 
120 million people infected, and those people need us, ladies and gentlemen. They do need us. And it's not by chance that I'm speaking to you today here. It's not by a coincidence that we came to the same place here. We all in this life, we have a mission. We are not here by chance, we're not here on holiday. We're here to, for a mission. All of us, each of us. Thank you. And I invite you, I beg you, to come and join me in this fight against this disease. So next year, we plan to have a whole week when we plan to have the 54 countries of Africa, the 54 together against the, the, against the, the disease. We are doing something already in San Tomé, please, a small island in Africa where we are eradicating hepatitis, the first eradication case. But we got to do something because 30% of the 120 million people are going to have severe consequences of the disease. And I invite you to live in this room here. You stop at our booth. You must have seen our booth, right? Get yourself tested. In all of the conference, somebody is, appears to be is found positive, like I was positive, and does not know. So please stop there. Register yourself. You want to yes. see? I'm finishing. Please. Uh, so please register. Right? For next year, I want every club and the first hundred clubs that join us are going to receive a donation from us, a free kit for testing. You're going to be performing 200, 300 tests. You're going to be loved by your community and you're going to save lives. Thank God. I'm going to... That's, that's as much as any life that we are planning to save with the help of God. I'd like to leave you. And this is all because there's nothing more important than life. Nothing. Yes, Thank you very much. I'll give you a very short video. Very short. 30 minutes. Not one minute. Half a minute. That shows what our campaign is. If somebody could help me. Show the video here. Can you see if it starts? Then I promise that I will leave this room very happy with my mission accomplished.